Hey everyone, how you doing? Facebook Live, we're going to dive into it. As you can see, I've got Zach, I've got Peyton. Zach is holding down the Ford in the Weather Lab. And uh, yeah, we've been a little busy lately, that's for sure. We've been um, doing a bunch of uh, you know behind the scenes work. Zach, you have been looking at the forecast, you've been checking out things. Why don't you take us through what you had with your show and uh, and what people saw on the newscast today? Hey, yeah. Well, Dan, it's been a quiet weekend. First of all, happy Easter. Hope everybody had a great day. It's been it's been quite mild. It's been quite windy. And that wind is doing a couple things. It's ushering in some significant dew point values. We're definitely pretty humid, and that's going to serve as some fuel for some storms tomorrow. Went ahead and issued a alert day for Monday. We have severe weather potential, um, and we're going to dive right into that right now. So let's just get you right there. Alert day Monday, significant severe weather is in the forecast. All modes of severe weather are going to be possible. Now, right now, tonight, it is going to be quite quiet. Not expecting a whole lot tonight, just cloud cover hanging on. Notice that dew point 61. I did a Facebook Live last night. We were in the 50s, so that moisture is definitely on the increase, and those winds they're going to stay up tonight, so it's not going to cool down all that much. Here's Fort Smith. We're in the 70s in some spots. Poto actually warming up a little bit. Last hour, it was 72. Fayetteville was 67, so those winds are sure ushering in some warmer air from the south. That low-level jet is, is uh, kicking in, and you can see the two-day storm forecast right here. Storm chances are going to be back in the forecast tomorrow morning at the earliest, so don't be surprised if we see a stray shower or storm tomorrow morning. We could even see some severe hail tomorrow morning. That's not out of the question. Those storms in the morning look to be elevated. And then as we go throughout the day, that's when storm chances really ramp up, especially during the evening hours. So around 8 p.m. Around this time, storm chances going way up to 80%. Then that chance lingers into early Tuesday morning. So it's going to be dark. We're going to be seeing a cold front making its way through. That will serve as the trigger for our severe storms. And those storm chances are going to be hanging on as we go throughout the day. Tuesday morning should it should end as we enter Tuesday afternoon. But um, Dan definitely had that storm potential tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Now, one of the things we're going to look at is how much storm activity is going to happen in the morning because that is going to make or break this severe weather potential. At the moment, it kind of looks like 
I don't know. I have my doubts about this active uh, thunderstorm activity during the late morning into the afternoon. However, I do believe that there still is enough energy that isn't being sampled. As Peyton and Zach and I know, the Baja blast energy, just to give you an idea what this is, and uh, Zach will take you through more of the show, but I just wanted to give people a reference. Here is the giant upper level low. But you're going to notice that, number one, there is no kicker system to the northwest. So not much of one, maybe a little bit that's developing north of Nevada that's dropping south. You can see the energy kind of lagging back. This is no doubt a positively tilted trough. Yes, there's little subtle pieces of energy, definitely a lot of cloud cover and those clouds coming in from the eastern Pacific. But I just, I don't know. I'm questioning just how much thunderstorm activity there really is going to be because I don't see anything that's really focusing that. And you might remember the models yesterday, they kind of had storms all over the place and that just didn't come to fruition on uh, what we saw um, for tonight. Because I remember a few days ago, it was showing a little bit of activity and some pop-up storm activity and Right now, we're really kind of not seeing that, are we, Zach or Peyton? Is the, the radar is pretty quiet. Yeah, the radar right now is quiet. i um, been watching it. A little bit of return over by Tulsa, but it's probably not anything to worry about. Um, but, um, yeah, one, one thing to say here with the energy, we, we are in that southwest flow, the energy coming in from the Baja region. So the models usually do not do a good job depicting that energy. So even though... And I've been noticing all weekend, remember yesterday, the, the short range models were showing some activity on um, Monday morning and, and now they kind of backtracks, but it could be a pump fake. So I'm not taking out storm chances tomorrow morning. I definitely kept them in. You can see 30% chance, even for the river Valley, there will be some chances for some storms tomorrow morning, but notice the peak during the late afternoon into the evening, into the overnight hours. Now it, it, it seems to me the energy, it, it um it, it keeps being delayed. Remember last night, it was coming in a bit earlier. And I was looking at the latest HRRR has the energy coming in at around 10 p.m. Continuing. That's pretty classic. That's pretty textbook, uh, Zach. Is, that's what time we normally get severe weather. We get it during the late evening hours into the early morning and um, probably storms developing east of the dry line in Oklahoma which will probably be towards the evening. But speaking of that dry line, there it is, Zach. You've got it. Uh, what's wild is the Weather Prediction Center is uh, a little bit off on their surface maps tonight, <laughs> especially with the forecast surface map. Yeah, so we got the energy further west tomorrow. The trigger is that dry line cold front combo. So that's going to be racing through. And again, we've been talking about the um, positively tilted trough. Here's all that energy. You can see it off to our southwest, and this is going to be advected in by that southwest flow. Now, here is the positively tilted trough. You can see definitely positively tilted, all that energy lagging way back. And this is going to be the, the um, forcing for the storm tomorrow. You can see it coming in, and then the main energy – looks to be coming in during the evening hours but but notice out ahead of the main energy we still have some colors of the of the reds of the yellows even some of those whites now that could serve as a trigger a mechanism as well so we've been talking about the prefrontal trough possibility a low pressure area out ahead of the cold front i think if we have tornado potential tomorrow is it's going to be from a a low pressure area out ahead of that boundary or, or just a boundary that sets up tomorrow. There's going to be some mesoscale uh, meteorology that needs to be in play, which is why we're, get, we're getting some comments, Zach, by the way, Zach and Peyton, we were kind of looking at all this. And uh, one of the things is um, they're asking about, you know, the upgrade. So could hail necessitate a moderate risk? And NATO cash showed a 10% tornado outline uh, for Southwest Missouri, Northeast Oklahoma, and far Northwest Benton County. Does that get reintroduced? I don't think that 10% hatch does get reintroduced. It was uh, earlier. Broyles did the update from the 7Z outlook. And then also the night before was uh, the day three was also Broyles. Um, and, uh, you know, he 
hey, he's still an amazing forecaster at the Storm Prediction Center. They know what they're doing. They're, they're definitely experts in meteorology, but there's definitely was a downward trend, which is why that 10% hatched area was taken out. Um, but yeah, I, I will say this, the warm front is typically the area that you want to play if there's tornado potential. So I don't think there's going to be a moderate. I think it remains an enhanced. There's too much uncertainty as in terms of where storms will develop. There's too much uncertainty as to how much convection will be ahead of the main thunderstorm activity. And there's also a lot of uncertainty on the wind shear. Let's face it. This isn't a textbook tornado, you know, wind shear uh, outbreak setup. It's just not. It's where you have local meso boundaries, as, as you mentioned, Zach, little pieces of energy that might fire, fire off a storm that might increase, a, you know, a low level wind that, that, you know, that could uh, back the winds just a little bit more. And Peyton, you know all about those mesoscale features. Yeah, it's definitely going to come down to the wire. It's going to be based on, you know, little things as little as outflow boundaries from the storms out west that influence the shear profile over us. It's going to come down to those uh, game time decisions, so to speak, as to that, that tornado threat. But I do notice it does look more favorable in the river valley compared to northwest arkansas but i mean that's one percent to two percent still fairly low. yeah you're right on that and i'm gonna we're, we'll go through this so let's answer some questions uh uh zach but you want to i want you to zoom in on that enhanced risk because from the morning outlook of the day two to the 1730 outlook which was at 12 30 hope everybody had a great easter sunday too what a beautiful day i mean yeah it was cloudy I wasn't able to play with my telescopes uh, and look at the sun the last couple of days. And we'll, we'll get to the eclipse forecast. I think we're in trouble personally for the eclipse forecast. I really do not like the setup, but of course things can change. So Zach, there's the zoomed in view and you can see that covers the Fort Smith area, Fayetteville, Bella Vista. Now, one of the things that you mentioned yesterday and that I was hinting at, just because you're not in that orange shaded area doesn't mean you can't see severe weather and, in fact, all threats. So maybe the coverage is a little bit less in LaFleur County as well as Scott County and Logan County, which is why they have a level two. But you can still get an isolated storm. And the next thing you know, you've got severe weather with tornado potential there. So um, we'll we'll see what happens. But uh yeah, Zach, so there's the outlook, and you can see that definitely shifted southeast. Yeah, it definitely has, Dan. I think we should emphasize the um, threats here. So, again, tomorrow we, we are in the enhanced level 3 out of 5. And when we say 3 out of 5, we mean many severe storms possible. Again, timing is going to be tomorrow. Looks to be during the evening hours into the early Tuesday morning hour time frame. Again, anything from large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes all on the table for us for us tomorrow, with the main threat being significant hail. So you can see we have a hatched area. Now, what the hatched means, that means that we could see hail that's over two inches. That is hen egg size. So a couple weeks ago, we had some we even saw some softball sized hail up there in um, Benton County. And, and, and we had the hatched then and we had the hatch now. So de definitely here's a counter here. Get your hard hats out tomorrow. Not just uh, keep, keep in mind that if um, you have a car, get that undercover parking. Um, you just keep in mind that this, this type of hail can be life threatening hail, the, the over two inches. So this is, no, no laughing matter here for this hail threat. So, and Zach, one of the things that, you know, let's just go back to a couple Thursdays ago when there was the softball size hail that happened. You might remember that hatched area covered a good portion of our weather coverage area. But you have to remember that, in fact, you're dealing with a large area and there may be an isolated supercell that forms in one specific area, that's where the hail happens. Almost exactly like what we saw. That doesn't mean that every single area in that red hatched area is going to see hail over two inches. It's just the potential is there. That's where the ingredients are. And it all depends on where those isolated supercells form because that's what it's going to take. Because when you get the line storms and you get more of a squall line and a QLCS, 
you just don't get as big of hail production because you just can't have that in the thunderstorms. It doesn't allow it to happen. Um, you can still get hail up to two inches, but the but the softballs very, very rarely, if not, I don't think I can ever think of a case, Peyton or Zach, and you can tell me otherwise, of a QLCS producing softball hail. I don't think it happens. No, yeah, we had a pretty good question last night about – what happens when the storms form into a, into a line? We were talking about, did the storms weaken? Did, did the storms strengthen? And, and the properties definitely do change. Dan just mentioned it. Once the storms form into a line, the hail potential does go down. And that tornado threat also goes down too. N not, not saying we couldn't get a spin up along that line, but the uh, straight line wind threat looks to be increasing once they form in, into a line. And that brings us to our, our uh, secondary threat here is um, the high for damaging winds tomorrow. So again, definitely all modes of severe weather possible. And this is the wind outlook. Again, encompasses pretty much the whole forecast area. So damaging winds are definitely going to be on the table tomorrow as that line comes through. And then again, the line seems to be coming in during the evening hours. But be weather aware all day because we could get a supercell that fires up before that main line. And that will bring us the tornado potential possibly. So we have, we have a low now, now, even though we're low, it does not mean non-zero. We have the whole area in the brown shade that is low. So one or two tornadoes are not going to be out of the question as we go throughout the day tomorrow. And I think we're going to have to keep alert throughout the whole afternoon, especially during the evening hours as, as all this energy comes comes through. I do want to mention something, Zach. Uh, before you go to that, let's look at – now, remember, this is just the model, and while it's not terrible, um, sometimes it's not always correct. But this is the new NATO cast, okay? That's on Twitter. A lot of people have this, follow this. And it does have that 10% hatched area showing up, Um and the warm front does have the storms as well. Uh, I think this is forming because of the triple point that's expected to take place. So you're going to have a dry line, you're going to have a low pressure system, and then you're going to have a warm front kind of extending northeast of that. Uh, and then the cold front catches up with the dry line, and then that's when you start to get more linear storms. But, um, you know, it's just you got to look at that and, you know, take that with a grain of salt. That's the new HREF models, zero uh, Z suites uh, and twenty one Z initialization. So that kind of shows you. It's funny when you look at NATO cast. It's like the new, 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 new update, and it kind of cracks me up. It's like new, new two thousand twenty two models, and then new, new. It's like wow, if it's new, new, then it's really new. But anyways, that gives you an idea of that. So um, something to watch for sure. All right, Zach, take us through that tornado threat, what we have from officially the Storm Prediction Center. And remember, that NATO cast is a little different than the official Storm Prediction Center outlook. Yeah, so the whole forecast area has been highlighted in the, in the, in the uh, low risk here, and that means that a tornado can – the probability of a tornado within a point, 25 miles of one point, is um 10%. So – Again, this is for tomorrow, and, and and this is what we have to watch out for. Um, got got a phone call today about tornado potential, and 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 there was somebody from um, Springdale was talking about it. It it wasn't Roby, but um, the Springdale tornado comes to mind. It was a lower risk area, so that's a great point. Even though we're in a low risk, it it doesn't mean that we can get that we can have the guard down. We, we definitely have to stay alert throughout the whole day tomorrow, even even during the morning, because we could see some hail. Now, I can show you a feature track. Again, it's just just a model. This is the HRRR model. I, I've been showing this throughout the evening on the newscasts. Here's 7.30 in the morning. It looks pretty quiet. Some energy trying to work its way in around 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, this doesn't look too bad, but again, we, we could see some – uh, elevated storms, some stronger storms, then it kind of keeps us quiet. But notice how the cloud cover is really sticking around during the morning and during the afternoon Monday. That's why the surface-based instability is 
is pretty conditional. So if we get some clearing during the morning, if, if, if the atmosphere is capped, if we don't see rain or if we don't see storms during the morning or early afternoon, that would give us a greater severe storm potential when all the main energy moves in. And, and here's the main energy. Here's that line of storms. This latest model trend really shows that line forming around 9 30 9 p.m making its way through pretty quickly so i think the main time frame for severe weather tomorrow is going to be from around 8 p.m monday to around two o'clock in the morning tuesday now notice that as this front slides through on the on the back side of it there is a potential for some more storm activity as that low pressure wraps around now, at this point in time, 4 a.m. Tuesday, I think the main severe storm threat will be east of us. But these storms could become strong, could see some hail. And then, again, we are in that positively tilted trough. So this might be exiting a little bit quicker. I think we could see some rain Tuesday morning. And then by Tuesday afternoon, we should dry out. And then the cloud cover um, could potentially hang out a little bit into Tuesday afternoon. So... Dan, that was A's triple R. Peyton, um, you guys buying that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> similar to a couple weeks ago, we saw a little bit of shower activity ahead of that really strong system. So I do definitely think it's possible. And remember, it was a Baja blast, and it was also a lot earlier. Just everything that day was a lot earlier than what models were showing the night before. So I definitely think it's possible. But I've been really uh, harping on IR satellite over the past 48 hours. And it does look pretty cloudy compared to a couple weeks ago where we did have a little bit more clearing, I believe. So we were able to get a little bit more daytime heating. But this is some pretty stout southwest flow. So even despite clouds, you remember this, this weekend, it was fairly cloudy most of the day. But we still warmed up into the upper 70s and maybe low 80s in some spots. So I definitely think... We're going to see a good amount of instability. Uh, there might be a little bit of a cap, but if that breaks, have some pretty robust convection. I mean, if we go to the nighttime microphysics, you can see this is an astronomer's nightmare. You can't see anything. There's just cloudy everywhere. And this is all that energy that's swinging in. And you can definitely see the ridge that's right over us right now. One of the things, though, Zach, can you bring that HRRR back up? And I want you to go to like 3, 4 o'clock. Sometimes the model shows green and it converts it to precipitation. But in fact, it's actually all it is, is just nothing. It's like there's no storms. And so sometimes go, go ahead a little bit further, a little bit farther ahead, should I say. Um, yeah. See all that, see all that green in Eastern Oklahoma. It just doesn't, I don't know. I have my doubts about that actually being, um, you know, like essentially that is rain that's moving in. It, sometimes it, it, it looks like it and then it converts it to precipitation and then it cools off the temperatures. So I actually didn't see that HRRR, the newest one. That, that explodes quite a bit of storms across the area. So I think they're going to keep the enhanced risk. But uh, I want to show this. Josh had this comment right here. They said, if uh, any risk upgrades are introduced, I could see the remainder of the area not already in the hands being added to the enhanced risk with some parameters south of the river valley looking better in decent runs. I would agree. And by the way, that is a very sharp picture of you, Josh. Looking snazzy, man. Um, so I do agree. And we're going to get to the river valley. And we're going to kind of take a look at some of that stuff. But any guesses on when a tornado watch could be issued? So if that it does happen, it would probably be around, oh, five, six o'clock with us being on the eastern edge of the watch. It may be one of those where they issue it in Oklahoma first, kind of like what it was a couple uh, Thursdays ago. There was a tornado watch, but it didn't include our coverage area. It was west of us. And then they extended it over time as those storms started speeding up, which is what you said, Peyton. It all developed a little bit earlier than expected. So um, here's a question. The Springdale tornado formed out of a QLCS situation. It was at the apex of a Boeing line segment where converging winds are more likely. Not only that, Bradley, but there was a lot of things that we've done. Zach, Peyton, Josh, and I have all done a lot of research on QLCS tornadoes because let's face it, 
That's what we mostly get in Northwest Arkansas. And QLCS stands for Quasi-Linear Convective System. Meteorologists always have to sound pretty smart, so we have all these huge acronyms and these fancy phrases. It's just basically a broken line of storms, meaning it's not a solid line. When it's solid, it's a squall line. And one of the things with the QLCS on um, March 30th of 2022, there was a line break. So that was indicative of a surge, a rear inflow jet surge, which split those cells on the southern tip of that northern cell that's in the line break. That's where you get the tornado potential. Uh, there was also, um, it was a little bit of an appendage that kind of jutted out. And so, you know, it's unfortunately those tornadoes, hindsight's 2020. So you can tell where the tornado is after the radar, but then you've got to, we want to get it before it happens. And one of the things is seeing that rear inflow jet signature where you see a descending reflectivity core on the backside of the storm. And then it kind of has an arrow and it essentially points to where the storm is about to produce a meso, mesoscale vortex so or a meso vortice, if you will. Um, anything that forms in the warm sector and can mature, take advantage of the small mesoscale features that could get a bit rowdy. Another thing too is we're, we've got a lot of dew points, Zach. Do you have those dew point graphics? Yeah, let me get this up. And Corey, just while he's doing that, uh, let me see. You have, did you all see my comment? If not, that's okay. Uh, I do like yeah. that, though, what you're doing. I'm playing basketball from like two to seven. Oh, yeah, two to seven? Yeah. Let, let me get it up. All right. I can get it up for you. His comment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I didn't get, did he get a chance to see it? There it is. Will be a good day to go and play basketball outside in the Russellville area. So Russellville's a little farther east, and I think two o'clock. I don't know. I have my doubts about thunderstorms there. I would, especially with the positive tilted trough. That I think the energy is going to be lagging back. So I think you're good there. Uh, until seven, that's when there might be a little bit of an issue, though. But let's show those dew points here. Bring that up full. Um, so. Yeah, Zach, already low 60s, and boy. Hey, did we verify windy today? Um, yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually just looked at it, and I skimmed it pretty quickly, but pretty certain that it verified windy. And yesterday. Cloud coverage, sometimes it's tough to get those winds to mix down, but that still happened. But yeah, and, and, I, and, and I'm also certain that, Saturday was not windy. And you nailed that and you knew it. You yeah, said it. So that's good. Um, yeah, so here are the here are the local dew points, lower to mid 60s. Remember last evening, we were in the 50s, so it's definitely warming up and further south. Oh, 64. So this is one thing that concerns me. And Peyton, you know, when we had that mar when we had that uh, March, I'll tell you the event here. It was March uh, 14th. Well, we had that severe weather event that happened. Um, the moisture wasn't really in place until that late morning into the afternoon. <laughs> we already got sufficient dew points in place. And just the more that it pumps in, the more, uh, let's just say, deep the boundary layer is going to be, which is just a lot of fuel for those thunderstorms. So, um why don't you take us through some other models? So we looked at the HRRR. I'm going to take you through all of the high-resolution models that I have loaded up and look at the vorticity, uh, helicity tracks, essentially. And you're going to see there's no way to know exactly where storms are going to develop because they're all over the place. Got a really good question right here, Dan. That is a good question, yeah. So on the screen, it says, if we get a tornado watch as someone who lives in a mobile home, what is the safest option? So that is a really solid question. Here's what you need to do. In a tornado watch, you need to have a plan where you could quickly get to a solid structure. You never want to be anywhere in a mobile home if there's a tornado warning. Tornado watch means you need to start preparing and planning for a place to go. 
because a, a mobile home is a terrible place to be in a tornado. And here's why it can get picked up. There's no, even though we, t- you know, we preach all the time at schools and adults, spell out the acronym dark downstairs, under something, center house, keep away from windows. That is how you uh, essentially, um, you know, take tornado safety precautions. But in a mobile home, you just got to get out of them because a lot of deaths happen in mobile homes because they can get picked up very easily. Even weak tornadoes can completely destroy a mobile home. So, yeah, there you've got uh, the duck acronym. And I think it works pretty well, um, Kimberly. So, but not in a mobile home. Need to get out of a mobile home, get into a sturdy structure. So, great question there. Uh, O'Leary has a great point, too. Know your location on a map. I was so proud of the kids um, that uh, that happened uh, with uh, the weather talk that we did. But yeah, know your location on the map. There you see where the enhanced risk is. Know if you're in that enhanced risk. Know your county that you live in. And uh, like we were saying, we did that weather talk at um, uh, Shaw Elementary, and this uh, this girl pointed exactly where Northwest Arkansas was on a big map, and I was like, "Yes, they know where they live." That was that was cool. Remember that, Zach? Yeah, yeah, it's impressive for sure. Yeah, because we look at maps all day. I mean, we like we look at a map. That's that's, that's our job. We look mm-hmm. every day. We come in look at maps, so it's like second nature to us. Okay, so other models. Let's take us through some other models, other timing. And we'll bring this up. And Peyton, you got anything to add at all? Not at the moment, good. but not at the moment. I yeah. know you do. Yeah, I just didn't know if you wanted to get an edge in, uh, get a word in edgewise. So here's a look at the future track, and this is the four kilometer graph. I haven't seen this, so take us through this, Zach. All right. So here's right now, cloudy skies overnight tonight. Stay as quiet. Notice those winds, they're starting to really crank up. And then here's 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, so around daybreak on the way to school, on the the way to work. The model is showing a little bit of activity, maybe in a a stray shower storm tomorrow morning. Again, um, usually when you have a severe storm day, sometimes in the morning you you get a stray shower storm. And... And it kind of tests the dynamics of the atmosphere. So if one of those storms briefly goes severe, then you may be in trouble during the afternoon hours when the instability comes in. But here's the morning. Shows a few passing storms. Shows cloud cover. Maybe a little bit of thinning of the clouds in the river valley going throughout the afternoon. That has a lot less, Zach. A lot less. A lot less cloud cover? No, a lot less rain. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also see, too, that it has those little green speckles. But Peyton and I and and, and you and I know that that looks like rain, but it for some reason the model does that. It almost is like, you know, it, it, it shows precipitation. But when you look at the accumulation, it actually isn't rain. It's kind of a weird deal. But yeah. But that is rain in northeast Oklahoma at 6 p.m. right there. So what does the storms look like? Do they blow up? Uh, See, that that looks like a little supercell right there moving through northwest Arkansas. It does. Potentially. 7, 8 p.m. Going through Eureka Springs. So that's that's why we, we can't just wait until the cold front comes in. Out ahead of the cold front. There could be some activity, and, and, and those are the isolated supercells. So here's 10 Ooh. p.m. Yeah, that's that's trouble. Yeah. That's what a lot of things have been showing is that the river valley, just like on uh, you know that Thursday, didn't get storms until late night, and then they moved in, and it, there was an untapped atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. So here's 10 p.m. tomorrow. midnight but keep in mind the graph model usually has the storms a little bit too early leaving a little bit too early so this all might be a bit too early Mm -hmm. here and especially with the positively tilted trough a lot of the models have been hinting at 
uh, later onset of the main of the main energy moving in. So this might be a little bit too early. Would you, would you think so, Dan? Here. Yeah, especially with the positive tilt. I mean, uh, but I, it had it coming in right around like eleven o'clock, didn't it? Go back. Oh yeah, ten eleven. That looks like a supercell right there. Man, right at the beginning. Look at that. Uh, just in uh, in Scott County, and I mean in Sebastian County, Franklin County. Yeah, May, I do agree though with you as you said it moves out, and I think it's moving out a little too quick on that note. I think it's definitely worth noting that the H triple R and the graph looked very different. So that yeah. means that the that the uncertainty is is definitely there which will lead me to this point you want to see some uncertainty let me show you this so uh i'm going to show you what's called run to run maximum updraft helicity so basically in in layman's terms rotating thunderstorms what is the model showing in terms of tracks of rotating thunderstorms so let's go ahead and we'll take a look at it so this first of all is the H triple R. Then this is the 18Z, but I'm going to switch over to the 0Z because now it's out. So we'll take a look at this and we'll kind of animate through it. And so obviously nothing really going on until about 0Z. You got some storms, which the graph showed in Northeast Oklahoma and Southeast Kansas. And then everything kind of dies out as it makes its way into Northwest Arkansas. And that could be because the model was showing all that precipitation, which really wasn't precipitation. It's just looking like it. Um, and then you can see, <laughs> which is pretty typical, as it makes its way east, it starts ramping up again as the low-level jet kicks in. So moves into northwest Arkansas, dies, and then cranks back up again. So that is the HRRR. And then notice it still has another track that comes in and develops, right? Let's see. No, that's pr pretty much about it. So that is the H triple R. Let's look at a different high resolution model. This is the NAM three kilometer. And so let me see if the zero Z, the zero Z is out. So let's load that and take a look at the. All right. So we've got a lot of storms in Oklahoma. We've got a lot of storms in Northeast Oklahoma. And we have a couple storms, a couple little tracks. Not quite as strong. You know, when you get the reds and the purples and stuff like that, that's a little bit stronger activity. Uh, and I'm doing a wider view so you guys can see it a little bit better. And you can see a lot of those storms in southwest Missouri. So not as much in the River Valley for this model. That's the NAM 3 kilometer. Let's go to a different model here. See if there's a new one here. So this is the ARW, the, 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 what they call the HREF the WRF ARW. Once again, maximum run-to-run -run updraft helicity. And we're looking at the lowest zero to three kilometer, which is the best. That'll tell you a little more about tornado potential. So this time right here is 1Z. So it shows a track already coming through around seven, eight o'clock in the evening. If we step forward in time, look at this. This is what the river valley could be uh, really under the gun, but that is 10 o'clock where it shows a pretty impressive isolated supercell in eastern Oklahoma, and then it kind of weakens as it gets to the state line. Um, so there's that. Not much over northwest Arkansas, and the, a a a the HREF ARW has a little bit more. Let's go to a different model here, and we'll take a look here. A lot of these models, when I updated this, it didn't have the zero Z runs out. So any uh, analysis so far, Peyton and Zach, on what we're seeing? I thought this is good to show for the uncertainty and the amount of uncertainty as models, each different one shows a different rotation track. So here's a look at yeah. another one. Look at that through northeast Oklahoma. And then it kind of dies out as it makes its way into northwest Arkansas. And that doesn't even really have anything in the river valley. Honestly, most of this is focused in northeast Oklahoma and southeast Kansas and southwest Missouri. And that makes sense because you've got a positively tilted trough at first. 
until the energy actually swings out. So let's look at this one. This is the FB3. We'll look at the latest one on the HRRR. Or this is the HRW FB3. It's just a different model, different high res, what we call CAM model. And there it is in northeast Oklahoma showing storms. That, by the way, 1Z is 8 o'clock. Here's 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at that storm right along the warm front. So that's pretty intense. And that's in the early morning hours on Tuesday in south central Missouri. Uh, and then we move along here, and that's it. It doesn't have any activity. So a lot of the high-resolution models are really showing that maybe this enhanced risk for northwest Arkansas may not come to fruition, to be honest with you. I don't know, man. I have my doubts about this. Positive tilts always do that, to be honest with you, especially in our area. It develops storms ahead of time. Not only does it develop storms ahead of time, but then the energy is like lagging back. And when it's lagging back, that makes a that, that's an issue. Now, here's the RRFS. Ready to see this one? So this is 3 o'clock, or 3Z, which is 10 o'clock. Look at that track. I mean, that is a raging supercell right there. Does it hold together as it makes its way into northwest Arkansas? It does. And that, that, that has it coming through at approximately 4Z, which is 11 o'clock. 5Z is midnight. And then it does have additional storms. Now, that would be trouble for northwest Arkansas. So let's see what kind of parameters we have before that supercell arrives. Let's see what the sounding looks like. The GDPS? No, I'll look at the RDPS. Yeah, Dan, okay. we had a really so good this, question. The, yeah. About. I know I'm kind of analyzing a bunch of stuff. The shear doesn't look very impressive to me in terms of tornado potential. But remember that uh, sometimes QLCS tornadoes can do a mind and you know, have a mind of their own. And it's not always about like supercell shear that causes QLCSs. So I just have a couple more here. Um, Zach, here is the NSSL MPAS. Here's another NSSL model. Let's see if the zero zero Z is out. So we can look, look at the zero Z on that, and I'll look at the zero Z on this too. Let's I was going to mention, Dan, the RRF. Okay, well, in the meantime, Zach, well, what do we got? Well, Bradley was asking about. So on, on our last severe weather episode, we didn't have a cap in place and storms were just popping up like popcorn. I know the cap allows the area to destabilize even further until the cap erodes. How is our cap looking for tomorrow? And since you had a sounding up, I was thinking maybe we could check out the cap for uh, tomorrow. It's a good idea. Yeah. Let me do that again. Um, let me make sure I get the right sounding here. What model do you want to look at? I'll look at the H triple. Well, I, I got the NAM. I got the NAM three kilometer up because we had a comment about the NAM back here. What did okay. they say? Bradley. Oh, another Bradley. Um, Bradley said the NAM is choosing violence. So T typically does. Well, let's just see what the NAM does real quick here. Okay, let's do it here. I'll bring it up. All right. I wouldn't say super violence. I think the RRFS is looking more super violent. Yeah, the yeah. NAM. You know, late tomorrow evening. So here's tomorrow daybreak. Might see a few stray storms. Pretty quiet during the afternoon. All that green is probably just cloud cover. And then the late evening into the overnight, that's when the main energy swings through. Yeah, maybe the NAM 12 kilometer. I don't know. I don't, that doesn't look like violence to me. Now, maybe the parameters might. Hey, before we get to that, very important comment here. <laughs> Ella wanted me to ask you guys if you got the goodie bag and the Baja Blast. Oh, did we ever, Shayla? Oh, we got it. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I can't thank you enough for what you did. Um, that was amazing. And uh, yeah, a lot of the Baja Blasts seemed to have legs and walk off, didn't it, Peyton? 
Yeah. Yeah. It was a popular item, let's just say that. And uh, it wasn't just the weather team enjoying it either. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Ella and Shayla, for doing that. We still have snacks to this day. One time I choked while I was doing weather, kind of, just like I could barely speak. And it's because I ate those chips right before <laughs> Weathercast. So don't ever eat chips before a weather cast. Not a good idea. Uh, but anyways. Don't eat chips in general. Yeah. Someone said, um, well, you got to live a little, Zach. <laughs> uh, okay, so someone asked about the new convective outlook. That comes out at 1 a.m., so we will not be going live until then. There's just no way. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, really, honestly, that's that's about it. Um, it's just a lot of uncertainty still, and uh, I don't know. Here's my takeaways, and you guys can comment too as well. I don't really necessarily believe the enhanced risk should be as far southeast as it shows. Uh, now, the NAM looked like that was pretty intense, but – Oh, yeah, we wanted to look at a sounding, right? That's right. Let me bring one up here for the NAM 3 kilometer when it's going in. But uh, positively tilted troughs, they lag back the energy. So you get storms, but you don't get the violent updrafts because you're missing the upper level support. That's why negative tilts are so intense because when all that energy flings in, those thunderstorms just erupt. And you tap in with the cape, you got diffluence aloft, a lot of things that happen, and you just get really strong rising motion. And those storms absolutely take off. Callie, you missed this, you missed the live stream. I did. Yeah, do you want to get in here? Where is it? We're Facebook Live. You want to say hi? Say hi to everyone real quick. Oh. There's my Callie girl. What do I look? There's hi. the camera. <laughs> Look at this. We was still I in have. The background? Uh, I think you weren't actually. Okay, yes. <laughs> but now you're right up here, <laughs> front and center. All right, y'all have a good night. Are you going go to bed? To... Yeah, Is mom go. having trouble going to bed from me talking oh, so I woke loud? Her up. You did. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We are going moderate. <laughs> it's a moderate risk. All right. We'll see you. See you, Callie. Um. Okay, so anyways, let's look at the sounding real quick. And I'll bring that up. Aha. So that is an impressive shear profile. That looks really good. <laughs> However, what is going on right here? Any takers? It's a cap. Uh, I thought <laughs> yeah. you were asking the people in the comments, not us. <laughs> I, I kind of was, but you could chime in too. I will say so, it does look very favorable for some good hail. Yeah. That's some elevated hail, but but at the same time, that that that's a big cape robber. Let's see if that goes away. And why does that happen? Oh, yeah, there it goes. She got But them. look at that temperature at the surface, though. 66. Yeah, what time of day is that? So that is 5Z. 5Z. Might be a bit too cool. Look at the look at, look at the um, oh, the shear starts losing it too. So sometimes things can happen in between models. So when they were talking about uh, violence, I think you're I think you're right on that. That is a good sounding. Um, but I also wonder why does Sharpie right here, Sharpie, Python, why does it create that parcel process curve so far to the right? I just don't get that. Because that's a lot more cape than what actually is. Because you should take it right about here. And then go up, and you're still you still got pretty good instability, but not that much. Virtual temperature, 
Yeah, I just don't think that's a good way so. to do it. Personally, yeah. I don't. Look at the significant hail, though, right here. So we got March 7th of 96. So really March 6th of 96. And then we got 2008, February 5th, 2008. Holy cow. You know what February 5th, 2008 is? Can't say I do. I, I know some of you do. That is one of the analogs, everyone. And that's from Shreveport. So zero eight zero two zero six, which is February fifth of two thousand eight. Holy cow! I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna load this up here. That's why I loaded up Google, but you're gonna see this. Anybody know what that is? Anybody anybody can comment. So that was ready for this drum roll please. Super Tuesday and the longest track tornado in Arkansas history, February 5th, 2008, 122 miles. And that track was right here. Now, Shreveport <laughs> sounding, and the tornado was to the north. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> okay, Ryan, you got a point right there. Yeah, I was seven. <laughs> okay. Well... <laughs> uh, sometimes but anyways super tuesday was bad bad news look at this 87 tornadoes 57 fatalities <laughs> that was that was a bad day however as as amazing as that analog looks let's face it though sometimes that's not exactly what happens so where was that sounding Looking for it. Got a lot of tabs open. Ah, oh well. Don't know where that went. Well, let's let's finish off the stream here and talk about the eclipse because I'm extremely concerned about eclipse uh, cloud cover, <laughs> to say the least. Still a week out. Yes, I know models are not good a week out, but let's face it, the pattern. It's pretty much very consistent, wouldn't you say, Zach? Yeah, it's been it's been hinting at uh, cloud cover, some rain, storm potential, even maybe some instability coming in. But you know, the European GFS are not quite aligned. So, and, and we're we're over a week out, or barely. Yeah, barely a week oh. out. Can so you bring could, up those future track models with the eclipse yeah. path? Yeah. Stand by. You, should, you should pull up the American and European and Canadian ensembles that they have for a special Eclipse tab on Pivotal. You mean this one right here? Yeah. So uh, let me let me show you this real quick. So this is a really great thing on Pivotal Weather. You click on Eclipse and you can do all the different ensembles. So I've already got a pick for Arkansas. So I'm going to click on the Canadian ensemble. And basically, this is saying that the last four runs at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time, a little before totality, shows about a 57 to 68% chance of cloud cover. The farther northeast you go, the better the chance that it's clear. The darker blues that you see is more cloud cover. So uh, that just doesn't look great. The American Ensemble also... Shows a lot more. This is the GFS, essentially. Look at this. 74 to 80% cloud cover. Uh, the European Ensemble, which won't do cloud cover, but it does probability precipitation. It's got nearly 40% chance of precipitation. And then we'll look at the NWS Blend. And the NWS blend for cloud cover has 
75 to 71 percent so we're still a ways out but uh golly we'll see was 2008 a positive tilt hmm i know march 1st 97 was a positive tilt stand by we'll check that out alex i believe you but uh i I kind of remember a neutral trough with a long wave, but we'll see. Okay, Zach, let me know when you got those those models up for basically the, the deterministic models. Got it. Got the European up. Sweet. So if the eclipse was on Thursday, that would be great. But be amazing. So because we got the high pressure ridge coming in. Clear skies, but keep in mind with the clear skies, it's going to be pretty cold midweek. Thursday morning might even be below freezing. And then we're warming up. So we're warming up, but there's Sunday. Looking like a front looks to be coming through. Changes for some rain, a cloud cover. And then here's the eclipse path. 1 p.m. Monday. Definitely God. showing. That's garbage. Yeah. Hold well, on. Northwest Arkansas might get in on the partial. Yeah, I can make that a bit darker. Hold on. Stand by. Yeah, so here's, here's 1 p.m. Monday. Showing rainstorms. But if all this, if this speeds up, Jeez. I was looking at there's well, another you're on April. Hold on, Zach. You're on April 9th. It's April 8th. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, 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 like if all this speeds up. But go back and go back a day. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> um what did the GFS look like? Yep. You're correct, Alex. Positive tilt going to negative. That's what it did. Um, and I can show you this. I'm going to bring this up full here. So while you're bringing that up, Zach. Oh, you already got it. The GFS. So here's Monday morning. Ooh. It's just that stupid southwest flow, man, that just kills it. High clouds will be doable, but low clouds, it's a bummer. Wow, that's just, that's a storm chaser nickname right there. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. So real quick, this is um Zach, there's that positive tilt again, another system. That's the that's the trend. Early early week, we get a big system. Midweek, it's gone. Our pattern is screwed. <laughs> um looks to become negative tilt by Wednesday. Yeah, no kidding. Whoa. Look at that. Yeah. So here is uh, – I want to show you this because this is uh, the, the, the big system here that comes through. So this is um, – see if I can get it on the screen. So here is 0Z. So this is the fourth. This is the night before the big outbreak. There's the positive tilt. Then you can see it kind of yeah, trending neutral but still has a slight positive tilt to it. Boy, look at that energy slinging in though. You can definitely tell that system was organizing as it came in. And – I see a lot of times tornado outbreaks when those systems are enhanced as they come through. But yeah, look at that. And then by that time, the energy is already through. But if we go to February 5th, wait till you see the tornado reports. They are unreal. Look at that. 
there's a severe weather on um, not April 5th, February 5th, 2008. And then the storm made its way eastward. But yeah, pretty intense there. <sighs> All right. Well, anything to add, Zach? Peyton, pretty much done here. I think we can wrap it up right about one hour. Yeah, we yeah. got a weather. Go ahead, Zach. Are we? Uh, yeah, you're saying we got a weather blog up, um, KNWA.com. You can check that out. It goes in depth on all the risk risk factors tomorrow. Um, and, and we'll be keeping you up to date as we go throughout the day tomorrow. Zach, don't really forget easy to do weather time, too. Go ahead. I was going to say, Zach, don't forget to do weather rate in eight minutes. <laughs> he already did it. Oh, it's already done. All right, that's <laughs> good. Uh, but pretty much all the entire coverage area has you know, the same amount of probability of risk. I would say Northwest Arkansas has a greater threat of hail, whether that be 5% greater or 10% greater. That's kind of hard to fine tune. But there definitely is still some pretty favorable profiles for more tornadic activity in the river valley. So the further north you go, Hail becomes a greater threat. The further south you go, hail is still a greater threat, but not as greater of a threat. So that tornado threat just creeps in there a little bit higher the further south you go. We're just going to have to, but it's all the mesoscale, like you said, interactions that will really mm -hmm. make or break the, the, the severe weather event, essentially. Here it is. You go to knwa.com. It's right smack dab on the front page. You click on it. That'll take you to our weather blog. And uh, Zach has been crushing it over the last couple of days. So there you go. Got the, all those updated. Um, got the four ingredients on there. We've got the shear. There's the instability showing up. And so all things that we'll have to watch. High dew points. And, uh, ooh, that's kind of a high energy helicity index. I didn't see that. It actually got a lot higher than I thought. Look at the river valley, though. Really under the gun. So EHI is essentially Cape Ann shear. Um, Michael, you just got in. What's the timing? Can you show that timing graphic again, Zach? Yep. And then we'll shut it down. Also, Dan, you should check the SIG TOR parameter. I'm yeah, you, you know what? That's a good idea. It's fairly interesting. I can show it here if you want, or you can get it up. Let's. Does it die? Die off? It's pretty high. Let's see here. Oh, wow. In the River Valley, especially. Yeah. That's what I was saying. The River Valley has a higher tornado threat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So there's your timing for Northwest Arkansas. It's going to be mainly tomorrow evening. However, as Zach mentioned, there could be a pop-up storm during the middle of the day. If we're cloudy and cool, then say goodbye to uh, a significant severe weather threat because that's going to limit it somewhat, not entirely. Too much energy coming in to not see any storms at all, but that would be nice. We'd really dodge a bullet. And then the River Valley forecast, which I know you have right afterwards, Um, and you got basically the same timing. So new models will be out. Josh Rugger will have the latest on KNWA today at five. Also probably be doing a Facebook live, keeping you updated. And that will be after his newscast, um, and, uh, in the late morning hours, and then we'll be in and we'll, keep you updated and uh, Peyton might be mobile tomorrow, depending on the timing of the storm. So he'll be giving you reports live out in the field. We'll also have all our storm spotters ready to go and uh, mega Doppler on source six now. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's working now, right? The, uh, the mouse. Yep. Okay. Good. No, I didn't, I did not check the keyboard yet. I yeah, if the mouse works, the keyboard's going to work. Keyboard works. Yeah, it's working. All right. Well, four minutes left of Easter Sunday. 
Happy Easter, everyone. God bless. Have a great rest of your uh, weekend, which is like four minutes left. And then we're into the work work day. And, uh, you know, one, one more comment on here. Someone said, um, let's see if I can find it here. I really wish it was, but uh, unfortunately it's not. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, might not be able to find it. A lot of comments. A lot of people asking uh, what's going on. So, oh, there it goes. It loaded up a bunch. Yep, here it is. Nessa. Doubt she's on here anymore. But she's like, April Fool's? Yeah. This whole thing was a giant April Fool's joke. We're going to have beautiful weather tomorrow. No storms. No, I'm just kidding. No, unfortunately, that's not the case. So, all right. <laughs> uh, it's Mother Nature playing some tricks. It's probably going to be some April Fools with the models. So we'll just uh, we'll just keep on top of them. All right. Any last words, Zach Payton? Just stay stay alert tomorrow. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Evening hours, that looks to be the main time frame. Yep, absolutely. We'll keep you updated. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and have a good one. All right, Zach. Ended the stream.